Welcome back to Mommy's House. Emergency podcast assembled. Lots to announce, lots to discuss. New setup here. Got oh, some yeah. beautiful curtains, some new set design. And we got to discuss recent events, the Candace Owens crisis going on at the Daily Wire, the implosion of right-wing new media. Very sad. Very sad. Very sad. Yes, sir. And even uh, some of our favorite comedians and content creators have commented on it, Andrew Schultz and Flagrant. Mm-hmm. I have some things to say about that. I'm sure you do, too. But before we do that and before we get to that, want to give a shout-out to our sponsors for this episode, our friends over at Twillery, Crooked Twillery. These pants are amazing, Michael. I haven't taken them off. Joggers, man. I never wore joggers before um, I bought Twiller joggers, and it's a struggle now to put on real pants. It is. I love them. I think it's because I've gained weight, but also because these don't let me know that I have. <laughs> uh, but anyway, right now there is a promo going on, AH18. Get $18 off your first $139 spent. I'm telling you it's worth it. And these days, when you're an adult, when you're in your 30s, spend a little bit of that money and get something you're going to wear all the time because it's better than spending less money and never wearing it. How many things have acquired in your closet? I only buy stuff that I love. Right. If I have 1% of eh, right. I don't even buy it anymore. You know, when you're in the changing room and you go like this, yeah. I used to go, okay, and now it's no. Yeah. So it's instant. You know. You know when the leg goes in, no. Yeah, I know within half a millisecond, this is it. This Even is with it. like multiple colors, when you buy like, oh, this is great, I'm going to buy five colors. Just pick the ones you love. Mm-hmm. If I find something I love now, like with Twillery, I got joggers in like four colors. But we'll so see I'm what like, happens. they work, let's just do it. Yeah, but the ones that... Yeah. Well, I guess so. Maybe with maybe Twillery. Maybe Twillery. No, there's nothing wrong with Twillery ever in any way. Maybe Twillery is the exception. But anyway, go pick them up now um, at Twillery.com. Yeah. Use the promo code. Amazing company, amazing brand. Yeah. I stand by them. AH18, 18, 18 bucks off 139. And they also have um, dress clothes. So they have blazers, they have pants, they have dress shirts, they have collar stays, they have a lot of cool stuff. Um, not just casual clothes. So check it out. And thank you, Twillery. Yes. Okay. Michael. Michael? Yeah. Talking to that mic for a second? Hello. Yeah. We have lots to discuss here. I yeah. I have kind of been somewhat quiet about all the drama, and I find that uh, what's going on in like new right wing media over at the Daily Wire with Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, all of that stuff. It's weird because back in the day, you and I used to talk about all this stuff in the abstract. Oh, I wonder what it's like over there in those circles and what's going on. But now, post October seventh and all of this craziness, I have kind of been thrown a little bit into the scenario not to toot my own horn in any sort of way but just realistically having been someone one of the few people who's actually had a civil good conversation with candace on these topics yeah and engaged with her so uh we have had conversations and exchanges a little bit on twitter and maybe at some point there's nothing no announcements or anything like that but we may cross paths again and have right. conversations about it and there's a lot to be discussed, but I do want to. And you have, I'm gonna cut in. You have, um, you you guys like talk a little bit, so like, so you do have a little bit more of yeah, a personal I, insight into how she, into yeah, what and she's exa- like. And if like I tweet something, I know that she'll see it and it, mm-hmm. she might process it. And I I just have been thinking a lot about how we as a Jewish community have responded to what's been going on, how the Daily Wire's responded to what's going on, and I have some thoughts on that. And then watching people kind of theorize and hypothesize about what's going on, it, it kind of makes me want to be there in those conversations to be like, no, 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 no. So, on the first corrective, I think, needs to be done. Let's just talk about the episode of Flagrant, which came out yesterday, with yeah. Andrew Schultz, Akash, and everybody Alex was talking about. Gagnon country. and Alex Media. Now, we'll start by brown-nosing. We are we are massive fans of Flagrant, of Andrew Schultz. We've talked about them a lot on this podcast. And Andrew, well, he put out a really, really nice, heartfelt clip after October 7th. Yes. He waited like two weeks to mm-hmm. really think about it. Yeah. And it was uh, I thought it was compassionate to both sides and very well, very thoughtful. Right. Um, and, but he, I don't think he said much since then about yeah, the war. Yeah. And he, I, I think it's important as a Jewish community, even like amongst us, to always look at people and what they say. And before going to any sort of condemnation or criticism, let it be reflective of what they honestly feel about something. If you take what they're saying in good faith, then even Joe Rogan's comments on genocide or talking in that episode, you kind of wonder, oh boy, that's kind of disturbing. But it's reflecting how he's perceiving a situation. So there's two choices, really. You could shout at it. You can make... Uh, proclamations and condemnations or you can engage with it and say well you may be getting this wrong so like what's going to be more constructive in the long run you might feel better about yourself for condemning somebody who doesn't have a situation right or figured out but that's not really the answer that's putting yourself and your ego before that right like Mm -hmm. so like i think when people misunderstand something it's best to engage with it which is what we're going to do right now so some of the things that were discussed i found 
Yeah, well, a little unsettling. So, so for someone and, who didn't see the clip, what, yeah. we'll break it down a little bit. So they were basically discussing Candace Owens leaving the Daily Wire, the big split. And they were basically saying, and Andrew was saying, that this just shows the hypocrisy, essentially, of Ben Shapiro, who made his whole career on the brand of free speech and free speech absolutism. And that that works so long as you agree with Ben, but the second you don't, you go out of the Overton window of the Daily Wire, all of a sudden you're fired, which contradicts everything the Daily Wire stands for, and therefore Ben's a hypocrite, and he's doing it for the money, and he's doing it for the clicks, and he's building a business and a brand, and therefore he's made his biases clear and all of that. And and this is a sentiment that is, I've seen a lot, Sagar yeah. and Jetty also put out a video where he's like, he laid out all the kind of facts and was like, but let's be real, people, we all know this is yeah. about Israel. Right. They kind of, they, they reach, they sort of look at all the facts and then go back to the same conclusion right. they wanted to from the very beginning. So what I'll say, a couple of things need to be cleaned up, I think, conceptually about this whole thing. The idea of free speech absolutism. Let's define what that really means. I think even the philosophy or the concept or the principle of free speech absolutism means, I think, the way I define it is, all speech is permissible in the extent that it should be legal at the governmental level, censorship is wrong on all speech that isn't inciting directly incitement to violence or threats or things of that nature. There are certain things that are beyond the pale because they're essentially threats to violence. But beyond that, any speech, anything you want to say under the principle of free speech at the government level should be legal. That is not the same thing as saying any speech anywhere on any publisher should be allowed. But I'm going to push back a little bit on that. Because, Talk to me. Because, uh, and I, don't, I can't give you details here, but hasn't Ben Shapiro been very outspoken about in private institutions like Harvard, mm -hmm. professors, or in corporate settings, people being fired for saying the wrong things, and also been outspoken that that shouldn't, that that's not right? Well, I'll finish the point. Okay. Um, first of all, if it's a public institution, that's one thing, and Harvard takes a lot of subsidies and, and, and government money, so one can make the argument. But before we get into the weeds of that... okay. It is not to say that the Daily Wire, in principle, has not doesn't have guardrails around what's permitted. For example, there's no profanity on the Daily Wire. There's no nudity on the Daily Wire. Mm -hmm. Which people are disappointed about. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm sure some people want some of those hosts to strip. But the point is, there are guardrails, and not allowing those things on the Daily Wire, I'm just talking about the, the principle here, doesn't make it anti-free speech... Or, 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 or conceding that it does do that isn't contradictory to the Daily Wire brand. The Daily Wire is clear about its editorial bias. Ben Shapiro and the people who founded the Daily Wire were not trying to provide an alternative to create a space where you could say anything you wanted. They were providing an alternative voice to the dominant left-wing narrative of the current state of media. And that was generally leaning conservative. And the argument, I think, in nuance is that they allow a range of ideas much more so than within the left-wing dominant legacy media. There's actually a range of viewpoints, and they encourage debate to an extent. But you can't get up there and start mouthing off F-bombs on shows or stripping naked. Um, and now, in, 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 in when it came to Israel and that stuff, sure, like... I, I'm not saying they handled it properly, yeah. but I'm not saying. But the idea of firing someone for having ideas right. that are beyond what's acceptable, or, or doing things that are beyond what's acceptable, doesn't violate the brand of free right. speech. I think there's a confusion over government free speech, and a publisher that says, "Well, like Ben Shapiro mentioned, like I'm not going to put someone who's totally for abortion, or everybody of every political persuasion is welcome to publish at the Daily Wire." Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. So, I just don't think it's contradictory the way they right. were claiming it was. Yeah, so let me ask you this question. Yes. Um, Does that make sense? Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. I have two questions. Yeah. How could it be that the Daily Wire mishandled this so badly mm -hmm. to leave to leave this so open to right. to attack? Yeah. And B, if you had to make the case against the Daily Wire, it, 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 if if there's anything redeemable in what Schultz and Cigar and 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 all of them are saying, yeah, um, could like what can you see anything anything where you do agree with them? A hundred percent, I do because I think that. Ben spoke about this on Dave Rubin on the Rubin Report that a lot of the anti-cancel culture movement was a response to the excesses of the woke left. That being, we're against cancel culture, but we're not against canceling anything. Cancel culture, it, it forces you when you see like the backlash of this to finally push all the way to the pendulum swinging the other way to bite you in the butt. It kind of makes you refine your argument. 
So we all knew kind of what cancel culture was when it was in its sort of far left wing form. It meant any comment, any joke, any unserious remark, basic human interactions between people involved deplatforming someone, canceling them, shunning them, making them walk the plank and apologize to the mob for saying jokes, for just talking like human beings, for assuming intentions in people that weren't there, right? So there was a response to that. And I do, but but I do. I, that doesn't mean that if somebody gets up there and legitimately says something really racist or hateful or nasty, um, or holds an opinion that's very objectionable or problematic or has a pattern of behavior that's problematic to a publisher, yeah. that they can never be fired for anything. Right. I just think that is the mistake. Well, well, so, but but I get it. There are there are things that make Ben Shapiro look hypocritical. But if yeah. you actually unpack it and think in a more nuanced, right. gray way about it, it's not all that contradictory. Yeah. No, I I, I think where Schultz. Um, is messing up is is they're kind of crafting this narrative as if she like made one anti-Israel um, video mm-hmm. or she or she has like a very good point against Israel that she keeps making mm-hmm. but it's it, with her it's really more of a pattern of using anti-Semitic tropes um, um, uh, uh, w- within many different um, areas that she's covering she does it with culture. the pharmaceutical company she does it with pop culture she's been doing it with P. Diddy she, yeah. she did it with Kanye and, and also she does it with Israel mm-hmm and like and like that's kind of the full picture and context that right. they're not bringing, um, they're not bringing into their analysis. Yeah, they were like, no, I didn't see it. They're like, I didn't. He's like, so so like, I didn't see anything else. Was it just like Israel? Was it like this? Maybe they just didn't realize yeah. the pattern of things. And I think what's really been going on that's been super troubling is this pattern of, it's not to say that an, that 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 Candace Owens in her heart feels anti-Semitism or hostility towards individual Jewish people or towards the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you can't say things that then embolden or encourage or create suspicion of Jews. And not being aware of that or inadvertent of that, like that can be very unsettling and disturbing for the Jewish community. And uh, again, there's also something to be said about the fact that I put out a video criticizing Shmuley. We did a whole segment on it last episode about calling anti-Semitism where it isn't or mischaracterizing someone you might be an opponent of or somebody you want to challenge. It's completely unethical, immoral, and unproductive to create a caricature of that person, a misrepresentation, and criticize that, which is what Re- Shmuley was doing. Mm-hmm. People used to do this with Sam Harris all the time when they would criticize him when he would criticize radical Islam and things like that. They would just create fake versions of what Sam Harris was saying mm-hmm. and criticize yeah. it. I'm not meaning to compare the two, but just the idea is it's completely useless and yeah. counterproductive to create fake caricature versions of people, which is what some people were doing with Candace. People, yeah. The rabbi who went on her show, Barkley, who went on, and it was just like, I don't watch your show, Candace. It's like, then what are you doing? <laughs> right. It's like, Candace, Candace, I have to do this impression. <laughs> Candace, Can- Candace, I don't watch your show. I'm much too busy. And it's like, well, then what the hell are you doing? <laughs> so she, I, I give her the pr- credit for that yeah. one. She wins that conversation because you don't even know what you're challenging. Yeah. I would say, challenge people for what they do say, not what they don't say. But I don't think Schultz was really plugged into all of that in the totality no, yeah. of the clashes they were having. I, I I would really encourage Schultz and anyone who's watching this, go like just Google like Candace... P. Diddy, Candace, Kanye, Candace Shmuley, Candace yeah. Pharmaceuticals. Watch all of her stuff about all those topics. And like she always veers into they just happen to be Jews. I'm just asking the question, right. why is there a small group of people in Hollywood making these decisions? She always gets there mm. on, on a range of topics. And I, I think besides for Israel, let alone Israel, sh- I think sh- she'd be on like the chopping block just for that stuff. Well, and I, here's the thing. I think what she would say, I actually know what she would yeah. say. She's like, I'm saying they happen to be Jews because it's not important. I'm not saying because they're Jews. I'm just saying they happen to be Jews. But obviously, I think that that highlights a, an ignorance to the past persecution of Jews and how hatred and hostility of Jews begins. It begins with suspicion. It begins with this whole view of Jews as others, as in control, and it plays into that. Now, whether she's doing it inadvertently or not, you know, if she claims she's not, then you have to take people at their word, but that doesn't mean that the the rhetoric that you participate in and that you perpetuate doesn't still cause that, as evidenced by the threads of Nick Fuentes clips and all these things that happen when she she amplifies these kind of messaging. And I think that Engaging with her on that and challenging her that is not controlling her speech, at least not when I'm doing it. It's not ch- it's not silencing her. It's yeah. engaging with it. But some people are obviously now with the Daily Wire's mistake. I yeah. can acknowledge. Is that what you want to get to? Yeah, yeah. How they mismanaged it and what may- maybe what else they could have done. It's easy for us and our sitting here to say how they should do this and how they said. I don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. I'm sure I'm sure there's more to be said and there will be more drama unfolding. But I just wonder, and this isn't a defense it of any one particular actor in this, but. I'm curious. I'm like, the Daily Wire's got some of the most brilliant minds on the planet. 
very well educated on anti-Semitism, on Israel, and all these things. When this started to happen early, especially post-October 7th, why not assemble a big episode of The Daily Wire in which there's a panel? You got Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, Douglas Murray, have him drop by. And even people who are critical of Israel, I, I don't know, get, get people of, 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 of different minds but, but share same kind of at least ethical um, uh, principle positions mm -hmm. on things. Um, get Dennis Prager there. People who've interacted with Candace, people who haven't, whatever, and like talk about it as opposed to this whole behind-the-scenes drama, nasty, online, political Twitter theater. Like, what if it, that was... What would have happened if that was what was done at an executive level and assembled so that we could all watch a spirited conversation on display? I don't know why that way they didn't have it. It's possible there was efforts to do that. I'm speculating. But I feel like... Don't you think that would have been interesting? Yeah, and it sounds like it would have been productive. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and this... It's not like they don't have access to the intellectual resources at the Daily Wire. Right. And how do you think that would have sounded? <laughs> Ready? <laughs> ha! Well, you know, there's always been something with the Jews, you know, and it's been that they've incurred the resentment of the world. Now, why is that? And then Prager jumps in. <laughs> the bastions of liberal thinking. <laughs> If you cannot tell the, uh, the difference, but I can't do a prayer perfectly, but it's like you see what I'm doing. Yeah. If you can't tell the moral difference between Hamas and Israel, then you are morally bankrupt. If you cannot tell the difference between terrorists who go into an Israeli home and murder families in their beds and take babies and women, I need a drink. <laughs> who would have moderated it? Dr. Phil. Yes. Now, now Ben, you said that. <laughs> You believe that what she's been <laughs> perpetuating online is problematic. Is that a good doctor feel? It's pretty, it's okay. It's okay. Now, if you can't, yeah, now, we'll be right back. I, mean, that's, I gotta give credit to Adam Ray. His impressions are amazing. He's the Dr. Phil guy. He's the Dr. Phil yeah. guy. And he does his own, we'll be right back. Now, but I, I, I have had it at times where there's like a nasal sort of way. Now, we're here at the Daily Wire and we're discussing a, cl a range of ideas. Now, Mr. Dr. Peterson, <laughs> how do you feel about that? that? He, he's bringing the camera back on himself. Right, 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 right. <laughs> he keeps now, making himself. <laughs> but back the here, point back is, here. I wonder what kind of conversation, I don't know, yeah. maybe the CEO could have moderated it and just had a conversation amongst yeah. peers before it becomes this. Yeah. Drama, but I again, mean, I don't know. I don't they know. they fell pretty <clears throat> pretty squarely into the ADL trap, which is calling something anti-Semitic, not engaging with it, and and kind of like canceling it instead of it. In, instead of it seems that way. That seems like a. It seems simp. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm the, I don't want to claim great. to know what's going on. I just, I just wish this. There could have been some attempt to make that happen. Maybe there was. Maybe it was just also like, look. At the end of the day, I also I do sympathize with the position that after October seventh. Why can't we all just get on the same page here? There's like Jews have just been slaughtered in Israel by a terrorist organization. There are kids still kidnapped and elderly. The whole world has come up condemning Israel. There's yeah. chants in the street pro Hamas. There's chants for kill the Jews in Australia. Do we really have to like have a debate here? Mm -hmm. Or can't we all just like have some solidarity? You can disagree about foreign aid to Israel. I mean, we had one of the most pro Israel guests on last week who's against foreign aid in yeah. principle. It's like academic discussions aside, moral solidarity. Why can't we have that? Yeah. But. Sometimes, like you have to like look past that for, and understand that people are are, di are different pro levels of proximity to an issue. It's also possible so. Candace was offered that and said, "No, I actually have my own plan here. I'm uh, planning my." Like, so you're I mean, presuming she wouldn't, she wouldn't have said that out loud. But no, it's, no, it's possible Ben wanted to. They wanted to, and she she if, didn't want to. If I have to guess, I don't think there was proper correspondence based on the Twitter yeah. theater that unfolded. What do you think it's like over there as a company? Do you think the hosts are chatting? Do you think there's like uh, coordination I mean, between the teams and everything, or the no, because it's so big and so successful that everyone has their own ecosystem. Right, the talent. There's probably the Nashville vibe, and then other parts of it. Like you know, where's Candice? In Nashville. She's in. She's yeah. in Nashville. Yeah, Ben's in Florida, and she's in Nashville. So I, uh. I, I look as far as like what's going on internally there. It's a massive operation now to its own success. Yeah. But back to just the Schultz flagrant take on it. I think it was just missing. First of all, the fundamental like definitions of what free speech really is, the brand of free speech, yeah. and what Daily Wire never made... Oh, and here's the fundamental difference. When the New York Times or MSNBC fire somebody for a different perspective versus what the Daily Wire does, there's a difference. You ready? You ready for this truth <laughs> <Yeah>. bomb? <laughs> the Daily Wire has a clear editorial position of being conservative or countercultural conservative, okay? At New York Times... At CNN, at MSNBC, or at least at CNN and New York Times, for example, let's just take them. They are claiming 
right. to be impartial, to be unbiased, when they are so clearly biased and mm. they hide behind this fake faux brand of we are impartial and just reporting the news. Yeah. Daily Wire is not doing that. They are out there front and center stating their biases, stating their opinions, and stating what the uh, culture here is of ideas. Now, it's, I think it's wider. I think it is more open. I think it's more open to debate and challenge. And Ben is not just debating random college students on university campuses. Yeah. He's debated Cenk Uger. He's debated other intellectuals. He's debated people. Um, yeah, he does do a lot of that other stuff. But at the end of the day, like it's not claiming to be unbiased or impartial on positions. Pe the, t the hosts there take positions, mm -hmm. and, often, and it's conservative for the most part. And there's disagreements within conservative circles. I'd say the culture is certainly more open to debate in general than liberal circles, but I guess, you know, the Young Turks, I think, has, you know, Zionist positions, people who hold that. They have Ben Glee, they have other people. So, like, I think being everyone has a bias, everyone has an opinion. So when CNN gets up and says, we don't have opinions, we're just journalists, that's right. a lie. And that is what is hypocritical. To, if you're the New York Times firing people for different opinions, you know, yeah. uh, I get it. So I, I, and I think you're making a distinction. It's not critique of Israel policy that, that Candace was consistently doing. It was other things that, in this yeah. pattern of behavior that was causing a right. lot of stir and trouble. Now, how they handled it, we just critique. But in general, I think that that was the confusion at the Daily Wire. And to pre at the, at, that was the confusion that, that the Flagrant Podcast was taking. And to presume it's just all about money, clicks, and business. And now they've got to figure yeah. that out, and it's just about competition. That the is, is is not is not giving them enough credit yeah. for the service they've done and for the value they've brought to culture, conversation, political ideas, the marketplace of ideas. What, what was disturbing to me about uh, there that uh, segment of, of flagrant? And again, I'm a big fan. I watch mm -hmm. every episode. Like I'll, I'll go to bat for for Schultz generally. Um, was the enthusiasm that they all had and like mm. how much this is animating them like right. the story of you can say anything except for criticize israel is such a good story mm. and it's animating a lot of people mm. and like it's almost like on the spectrum of like of like where people's anti like unconscious anti-semitic oh. tendencies come up like like there's a spectrum like you know, between October 7th and October 10th or whatever, you saw a lot of people, like, mm -hmm. it came up for them. And then when all the civil and now as the civilian casualties are mounting, it comes up for more people. And, like, maybe now, like, this kind of you thing think that exists is, within Andrew and the gang? Is that what you're I saying? I think it exists within everybody. Andrews I'm are like, the Prince Harry unconscious bile guy. I can't get behind that. No, I, 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 <laughs> I think everyone is susceptible to unconscious anti-Semitism, including... Me, including Joe Rogan. Inc you? I, I think Jews can also hate, hate Jews. I mean, look at, like, Jewish Voices for Peace and all that. Right. Like, I, I think everyone is. I, I'm i not saying at all that Andrew Schultz is an anti-Semite. I'm not saying well, that at here's all, what but, I will but say. he's you, susceptible you to it. You can't criticize Ben Shapiro in Israel and the Daily Wire while having a Nazi haircut. That you can't do, Andrew. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Although, let's be honest. What yeah. the hell is happening? Can we please grow those back? I think it was a better time. It's iconic at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can't do that. At some, he's, yeah. he's two seconds away from going, Fassen Juden! Um, I want to know his, he just had a baby, yeah. and he's also like doing shows at the LA yeah. Forum. Like, I want, like do they have a baby in, nurse? Yeah, how's that dad life have for a him? baby nurse. I want to know the details yeah, about that. Should, I don't know. I'm always curious about that stuff. But anyway, like, um, I, I, hope, I hope that that's not the case, but I would, I would like... Uh, th that's my fear when I see that. I was like, oh, but it's the counter to spreading. that is so you can't even bring up the subject of Israel or anything. And, and you see, what, no, see no, what I mean? It's like, I, I know, I'm trying to talk about anti Semitism, and even in talking no, about it, I that, no, you. that's I, I'm saying it seems like they're critical capacities here to really watch the videos and mm -hmm. to really do a really good analysis. Yeah. It, it, it is, is a bit non existent. And it's like, why on this do you do you not care to do the work? Where usually you're so thoughtful mm. and you're so insightful, right. you don't seem to be thoughtful and insightful here. So I'm, I'm, I, if, I'm just. Right. I hope if it's I'm not giving there. benefit of the doubt to them and everyone yeah. involved in this, I think we take for granted how close we are to the issue, how much we know internally about like what's going on in Israel and like family there and being educated on the Middle East. Like we are close to this issue. Yeah. So when other people speak about it with less knowledge, less experience. It may come across as insensitive yeah. to us, right? Because, like, you made a point about it, like the way Joe Rogan would talk about vaccines and COVID and, and COVID in general. I'm sure to a lot of like uh, epidemiologists, yeah, yeah. my, my doctor would, friends were doctor like, friends were like, there's so much he doesn't really understand, and I can get why it's frustrating. But it, you know, I think the response to that is to educate and to like explain, right. as opposed to like condemn. And I know you're not really doing that, but I think that's where it comes from more of like they're going to talk about it and be animated because it. It seems ripe for hypocrisy. Like you've made a brand out of not canceling people, and someone just got right. canceled. Right, and all oh, the great. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
all, all the great anti-Semitic. Sorry. Yeah. Am I good? Yeah. All, all the great anti-Semitic narratives. Jew beard. <laughs> <laughs> Is it yes, on my, my, the narratives. my nose? All, all the great anti-Semitic narratives are very juicy. Mm-hmm. They're always juicy. They did That's say, the reason they work. But they did say, I saw in the full clip, they were like, now everyone who's anti-Semitic criticizes Israel. Like they made concessions to like, yeah, like they, I get they, why they, this feels weird because everyone who hates who hates uh, Jews also yeah, hates Israel. Yeah, they all go yeah. for that. It it, mm-hmm. it 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 was that contrasted to the first clip they did after right. October seventh, where like even Akash, like everyone was very sensitive to us. Yeah. The hostages are still there. We're yeah. still sensitive. It's still raw. Yeah, yeah. they're not back yet, so it's not. It's, it's reflecting how the narrative and that. perception has changed. Yeah, and I think post. I think it was also very even to me and you the amount of. Gut wrenching, as Bill Maher called it, gut wrenching anti Semitism, unapologetic, proud anti Semitism yeah. that, that bubbled up was shocking to us. Yeah. We were like, oh my God. And it moved a lot of people in a certain direction of like being more concerned. Our antennas went up and yeah. they picked up on that too, which was really moving to hear from them. Yeah. And I think now that everyone sort of like made peace with that, it, it like accepted that as a reality, now we're judging sort of Israel and the situation right. and then the reaction to the culture or the the tactics of, of calling out anti-Semitism where it does exist and making accusations where it doesn't exist and that whole mess. I mean, Rabbi Shmuel yeah. does no favors, <laughs> no. you know, and no. opportunistic people who want to self-promote do us no favors. And yeah. so, like, you find strange bedfellows depending on the context and the situation. So now we're here where we're criticizing people who I always align with in most things. Yeah. And I'm just like, I just think it was very obvious to me where they were getting it wrong. There was this miss. Yeah. I'm like, Free speech as a governmental free speech principle, mm-hmm. free speech versus yeah. open to ideas, but uh, having a very obvious editorial yeah. bias, which they're clear about. And so, I'm, yeah. And I get why yeah. it's fun to stick it to them a little at yeah. this point, because now it forces you to refine your arguments. Yeah. It's, and, uh, and I'll say this. Jordan Peterson is such a prophet. He, I I've always loved Jordan Peterson. Right, yeah, yeah. I've always loved Jordan yeah. Peterson. But I'll tell you something. There was a time... When the woke excesses of cancel culture were in full swing, which I think we're sort of past now, but he was on stage screaming from the rooftops, we don't know when the left can go too far, you know, and what this is going to do is inevitably lead if you focus on identity politics, guess what's going to happen? The right's going to play the same game and it'll lead to the identitarian right. You want to play this game where everyone's group identity is paramount? You want to judge everyone based on race as the paramount feature? And put them into groups and judge them based on identity politics? Guess who's going to play that game? The far-right white identitarians, and it's not going to be pretty. It's not. And, it, and we are just seeing that. Literally, a couple years later, the excesses of the woke left has led to with this backlash of unapologetic yeah. white nationalism. Fuentes, yeah. Jake Shields, these guys on Twitter who are just tweeting memes of like, look how many Jews work in yeah. government. Look how many Jews work in this. And you're like, oh, here it is. And, and, and that's what I mean about everyone's susceptible. To, everyone's susceptible to, to greed yeah. and power. To vice. And yeah, to all that stuff. So the, the same things that affected the left can affect the, the right. And the anti-Semitism that affects the left can affect the right in the same guys, way. These streamers, I don't even want to say their names, but they're out there like yeah. minimizing the Holocaust and kind of wanting another one. Yeah. <laughs> well, minimizing the Holocaust and then also saying, but there's also a Holocaust happening in Gaza. Yeah, 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 that yeah. one didn't happen, but this one is. This one, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, you see it. You see this minimization of Jewish suffering, of Jewish trauma. Yeah. You see this cartoons, propaganda. You see like Jewish stars marking different Jews in government and all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like, wow. That's un- it, 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 here it is. Like everyone's feeling very comfortable. Yeah. Doing so, that. what would you do if you if you uh, worked at the Daily Wire now? What would you say their next step should be to start managing this? Oh, that might be beyond my purview. Control. I don't manage a huge media company. Yeah. Um. I really don't know. You tell me what to do all the time. I do. I, you're, you're my media company. Yeah. <laughs> um, managing a huge media company like that. I don't know. Well, well, how do you think? Do you think? Do you think Ben? I think what they're could trying to do is, is move. Do a I think they statement. should. I think they should just move past. I mean, what they're trying to do clearly is just move past it and not talk about it. And I'm sure there's a lot of legalities involved of non-disclosure agreements and things mm-hmm. of that nature, like what people can and can't talk about. Yeah. Um, and contracts and all that stuff. It's a business in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um. What to do about it? I don't actually have a good answer for that. Other than like you could let's let's play devil's advocate. Like, would engaging and and like bringing making that roundtable that I discussed is it too late for that? Or just um making a statement like a, they, they, like a compilation video of like listen oh. here here are the things I don't I don't know I don't I don't think they no. can do that. 
I don't mm-hmm. think they can get back into the mudslinging of it all mm-hmm. because there may be legal consequences for that. There may be lawyers saying if you whatever, you know, well, you said in this contract, I don't know the details of the wonky stuff. No, what can they do going but, no, forward cause, for cause, their brand cause, repair? Yeah, because they're being accused of being anti, of not really being the being Israel pro- media company. No, 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 of, of, of not of not really, not actually backing up their defense of free speech. Mm-hmm. Whether it has to do with anti semitism or not, I, I would think they'd be like, no, 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 we we do believe in free speech, and here's why. Like, not you don't have to mention her name, you don't have mm-hmm. to do anything, but be like... This wasn't th- about free speech. I think Ben was on know. a media run or like was doing interviews trying to say that. Yeah. All I can tell you is we're not like drawing the distinction between a platform and a publisher is is the attempt to do that. Got it. To say we're a publisher and we don't have to subsidize every single idea that's out there. That yeah. would be like saying MSNBC has to hire Alex Jones. Yeah. It's like, no, there's a platform. I'm, we're not calling for Candace to be deplatformed, to be kicked off YouTube, kicked off Twitter. Mm-hmm. She can do what she wants. Um, but uh, that's that's what their attempt at cleaning up the mess is. As far as direct engagement, I, I, I don't know what can be done at this point. There's been strategic mistakes made, I think, but uh, I think just maybe just giving it a minute too because when things are emotionally high, like trying to like move to other ideas, other, to other topics is sort of what they're trying to do. I, I don't know. I'm not, I, I just, that's what, beyond What beyond if the they person. hired Rabbi Shmuley? Oh my God. And gave him a show. They, they, they would never do that. The Shmuley Hour. They would never do that. He went after them. He went after all their yeah. talent. Ben is that himself. the worst idea? Yes, that is. That that's be, definitely the worst idea. That's the bottom. Good. Now we have a starting place. Yeah, that's the worst that's idea. That's the worst. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know if engaging with the the contentious issue, uh, yeah. like the, the contention right now, is 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 the thing. Moving on to other subjects might be, and and maintaining your positions, and this could just be a business separation and treating it as such, because then you just throw fuel on it. It's too emotionally yeah. raw right now. I think. I don't know. Yeah. People can infer what they want. And you have to, it's like chess a little, you know, who's going to, I don't know. Yeah. There's going to be stuff to be said. It's not over in terms of what comes out. People crave for this. This is like modern day drama that a lot of like people follow this stuff very closely. Oh, so yeah. people like it. As fans, people like it. I um, never in a million years thought I would care about in the inner workings of Daily Wire. Uh-huh. Or, and now or you do. publicly defend Ben Shapiro. Yeah. yeah. Pretty wild. Yeah. yeah. Here you are. You've come to my world, my I, I've always liked hip hop, though. You know <laughs> so. what I'm saying? Ben's a rapper. He's the number one rapper. Oh, because he's yeah. a rapper now. Yeah. I think the attempt of what they're doing might be the right move to just talk about this fentanyl documentary he made, talk about other things, cover Israel, keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I don't want to like step out of my lane and say, like, here's what they should do at this massive media company I've never run before. I have any idea how the contracts yeah. and the talent acquisition is That's what is podcasters assembled. do. They talk confidently about things they don't right. know. But in general, it's really sad to me, actually, to see this fracturing of the, of the new conservative media space. It's mm-hmm. like a real fracturing of it, because for a long time... It was really nice and I think a really good thing for the marketplace of ideas to see this countercultural like renaissance of for a long time. And Ben took so much heat. That's what like Yaron Brook was saying. He did so much. He took so much heat as this yeah. guy out there that everyone hated. Who is this guy? But he stuck to his sort of truth about believing these ideas. And it became the counterculture that a lot of people sort of accept, don't even realize that they have he's moved the needle, I think, in a lot of people's in persuading a lot of people towards you know, becoming pal- palatable to conservative ideas and to, and to good ideas and to exchange of ideas in so many ways. And that's what I think Dove on Flagrant was trying to say. Like, yeah, he had one slip up because, you know, a lot of people in his community and his people were just slaughtered and targeted. <laughs> so maybe he's allowed one little inconsistency. Dove, the and, producer, and, yeah, the producer of Flagrant, Flagrant said that. was saying to Andrew that. And they're like, yeah. yeah, but a pedophile, he says, I only banged one kid. I mean, it's not quite the same thing. Banging a... You know, engaging in that act is far worse a degree than one slip up on this. I, mm-hmm. I, I think we can maybe have a little bit of sympathy to understand why he may have slipped on this, even though I don't think it necessarily did. I can totally see why no. the perception was there. But anyway, that is sort of my take, my take on the situation as it stands. Mm-hmm. I hope for more constructive rebuilding of bridges and conversations and dialogue and good faith arguments and conversations to come. Mm-hmm. You know, what say you on the um, future of this? I wonder if the left wing media is like new media is just love. I don't really care about the Daily Wire or Candace Owens. What I care more about is are the tides shifting, um, even amongst, you know, after October seventh, some of my favorite news people like Crystal and Cigar, I, I can't watch them anymore because right. they're and and like I, I just hope the tides don't shift enough where even people like Andrew and Rogan and all these people like they become part of a, a ecosystem that I don't want to watch anymore. So but and like I feel it shifting and I'm like a little nervous. Um, yeah. 
that that's mostly what concerns it, me. I think the, you you have to be very cognizant of how you react when somebody is telling you they feel something about something. Mm -hmm. If somebody's giving you a window into how they're perceiving something, you can correct it, you can engage with it, yeah. or you can I, not you, but right. No, but 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 I I think juicy narratives like like um Rabbi uh uh why the the great Rabbi we interviewed uh why can't I remember his name right now that we interviewed yeah. Uh, Whoopi. Whoopi, yeah. Like you said, the when you have a juicy story like this, what he said, the only way to combat it is with another juicy story. I can't tell somebody who has one narrative my own narrative and just give them my own uh, about Israel. Right, right. He was talking about like a uh, uh, letter to my Palestinian neighbor, uh, um, Halevi, that uh, book. Yeah. I can't just like argue somebody else's narrative by telling them my own and it will be persuasive. Right. So I wasn't right, thinking so, of so drama so as much as like... They're, they're, they're wrapped up in, in a really juicy narrative right now. Yeah. And like I, I feel like you can't say anything to that. You just have to watch it unfold. Yeah. Um, I'm not... Yeah, I, at the end of the day though, I think if people are honest... All you can rely on is in honesty and integrity. And as long as people maintain that, then anyone can be persuaded or engageable or conversable with... Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Conversable? Convertible? Anybody's engageable if they're going to be honest. Like, I honestly feel this way. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm open to changing my mind. I'm open to hearing new ideas. Yeah. But I'm being honest about it. And I'd rather everyone just be honest. I'd rather Joe Rogan say how he feels about a situation than feel pressure to hide that out of fear of consequence. Mm -hmm. I'd rather know that he feels that way and then be able to engage honestly on that terrain Fair as enough. opposed to saying, he shouldn't say that. But what? What's better? That he feels that way and doesn't say it? Right. I don't think so. That's how you I get... I won't say anything that, again. And I'll, yeah, That's how you get people isolated into silos, feeling certain things about Israel or about the Jewish community, about Jews in general. Yeah. I don't want that. So in a way... But when people do come out and say problematic things, you can either correct it or you can criticize it if it's actually hateful it depends on what they're saying but you want people saying what they feel yeah. in a sense uh, yeah that's, and you don't yeah. want to create a, a culture and a climate of censorship in the sense that people feel they have to sell censor right. which was the worst excesses of woke cancel culture was that i'm not going to say any joke yeah. i'm not gonna make any comment lest yeah. it be you know right. if people are being honest take them at their word yeah. and if they didn't mean it if they meant it as a joke take them at their word all that kind of stuff yeah yeah and i i hope i hope anyone who's in that world has Jewish people or non-Jewish people close to them who who can who can speak to them and mm. explain to them maybe what what they're not saying or not hearing. Yeah. Amen. All, All right. right, Andrew, cool. you're welcome anytime. Schultzies, flagrant. We love you guys. Let's continue the conversation. Hell yeah, Akash um, too, man. I, I really like Akash. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody. Uh, I mean, I appreciate what they've done, and it was kind of geared. This this episode was geared at them, but in general at the conversation. And we hope. Uh, yeah, they're they're a symptom of something yeah. larger that we feel is going on. Cool. So we hope for a bigger and brighter future yeah. for the Jewish community and the world at large. Hell yeah. Uh, Peace. Peace. Peace.